everybody, welcome to our bonus episode. This week we are talking about everyone's favourite wife or girlfriend. It's a wag, Linda Baldwin. Is she a wag? She's a wag, she's a wag of Mike Baldwin. Well, yeah. Yes, I guess. I can always forget it's not just to do with football. Yeah, it just means wife and girlfriend. Yes. It doesn't mean footballing. I, I, well, I was thinking, uh, is it Linda Baldwin or is it Linda Sykes? What do you kind of remember her as? Um... Sykes, I think. I think she's more of a Sykes to me, although her biggest, well, probably pretty much her only story, which is what we're going to be talking about today, was the, the marriage, or the, the girlfriending and marriage of Mike Baldwin. Well, but, that's why I introduced her as a wag, because yeah. I feel like she's not really a character in her own right. Well, she is, but you can't extricate her from her relationship with Mike Baldwin. There, there's a reason why we've waited 10 years to do a character profile on Linda. We've done the main characters, but I have been doing a lot of research about Linda Sykes over the weekend, and and, and hopefully we'll be able to fill a little bit of time um, for, with her. Now, when you first watched Coronation Street, I think Linda mm-hmm. had gone at that point. Oh, yeah. You, you don't remember from, the, know, yeah. from the early days, but I think you just missed her. When so did she leave? She, she left in, um, in 2001, 2001. No, and you started true. watching it in 2001. So I wouldn't the, remember. I wouldn't. She left literally a month before I started to make you watch Coronation Street. Well, so when did we start at university? Yeah, 2001. Yeah, this well, was... I wouldn't have even been at university. No, 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 exactly. Well, I would start a... watching no, exactly. Coronation few... Street in preparation. You felt it in your waters. I'm like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to prepare for student life. What should I, what should I do first? <laughs> I'll watch Coronation Street just in case I can this make like a friend. It's like all the cool students do, exactly. There's That's... lots of people listening to us right now who did, who did the same thing and don't pretend that you didn't. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so, but you, you, so... You just watched her really for the first time like a couple of years ago, didn't you? Yeah, well, maybe the even re-watch. the past year when we did the rewatch. I've only seen did, did her you have highlights, any, you know. Yeah, did you have any like impressions of her before we started no, watching? I, well, I wouldn't. I, to be honest, let's let's be honest here. Mm-hmm. Let's not fool ourselves or trick ourselves. I barely knew, but Mike Baldwin was. <laughs> well, Mike I? Baldwin. I barely knew. Well, we, you did see a few years of him, but so if you don't know much about Mike Baldwin, then not much so much to Linda. Um, so what 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 do you what are you thinking now? You, did you enjoy the little? The, the, as you say, you saw quite... you saw a few highlights of Linda, didn't you? Over the I kind of yeah. I, I she's quite spicy, madam, <laughs> wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, she was. She's a proper minx. I remember not liking her at all the first time um, I watched it first time round because she was a bit of a well, she she was a bit of a nasty schemer, wasn't she? Um, but watching it the second time round, I think that that's what I liked about her, and I, I definitely appreciated the character a lot more. And um, it's a shame that she that she left when she did because she was only in the show for a couple of years, um, from well from ninety eight to two thousand um, and one, and that was it. And I think at the time I was probably glad that she was gone, but now I felt that there could have been more. And I think that during her early years as well, she was like a big big star, and Coronation Street were really pushing her to the foreground, and then she just went. See, I think that there's definitely something to be said about watching the, the kind of, the time, the, the way that time removes you from action, even though you have absolutely no way of impacting current events in Coronation Street. Still somehow, it feels like you're one step removed from watching older episodes. The same way that you are when you learn about historical figures versus politics now. Mm. Like, I feel like you can kind of take a step away and go, <laughs> she's... She's winding everyone up. Whereas if you were watching it at the time, you were probably like, she's winding me up. Yeah. You see what I mean? It's like everything's already happened. You can't you can't affect change on it, even though you can never affect change on fiction, really. So you don't feel like as caught up or like irritated by some things because it's already happened. Nothing's going to change the way it, it, it falls. And even if you don't know how it's going to end up, I feel like it's a bit more relaxing. I think, I think knowing how it ends up going to help because I remember... When, when she first started going out with Mike Baldwin, I was thinking, what the heck is this weird storyline? I don't like this at all. Mm. Because I, I loved Mike and Alma together. So this, you know, this young bit of skirt coming and flashing her boobies at Mike Baldwin. Um, I was like, no, that, this this isn't my Coronation Street at all. But having rewatched the, the, the highlights with you on the DVD and then just recently, the whole thing again on ITV3, knowing where it was going to, particularly the big wedding and all the fallout after that, it was like, oh yeah, this is, this is a bit juicy. So um, the, the reason, well, one of the reasons why we're talking about Linda this week is because she has now left ITV3's classic Coronation Street, for those of you out there who've been watching that. But the, the story's still going because um, she has a bit of a, a bit of a controversial and um, in- interesting exit and post-exit time. Um, I think it's great. I think if you're still watching ITV3's Coronation Street, maybe you'll be a little bit spoiled, but you, you, 
you, you kind of know that Mike Baldwin didn't kill her, don't you? <laughs> you, you know that. Spoiler. Spoiler, Spoiler alert. alert. Mike Baldwin wasn't a murderer. Um, so we're, we're going to go through a kind of a whole story and uh, just, yeah, so if you've just been watching it, it'll be a little... I don't know. You might not want to watch this if you've just seen it. But if if um, you're you're you've not been watching ITV 3s Coronation Street, or if it's been a while since you've seen Linda, hopefully you'll enjoy this and it'll bring back some old memories or teach you some new memories. You have Don't to use your imagination. You. She was born on the 23rd of June 1975 to Ray and Evelyn. 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 Evelyn Sykes. Eve. Um, her siblings were Jimmy, Ryan, and Dean, and another brother that everyone hates. Yeah, another brother who isn't named, but apparently there's there's five um, there's five Sykes well, siblings. I'll never speak of Adolf Sykes again. <laughs> Married to Mike Baldwin in the year 2000, she first appeared on the 14th of October 1998, and she last appeared on the 5th of September 2001. She was in 329 episodes, and she was played by Jacqueline Chadwick. She's yeah, she's Jacqueline Chadwick now. At the beginning of the show, she was Jacqueline Piri, and she got married during her time on the show. And so now she is Jacqueline Chadwick. So um, I, ca- I always forget this fact about Jacqueline, but she's very, very Scottish. She was born in Stirling. And um, yeah, she's got a proper Scottish accent. I can't even remember whether you know that when, I did not when you were watching Scottish. her. But she's like, she proper puts on a decent mank accent to play Linda, doesn't she? I would never she? have known. No, she's got, a, she's got a very thick Scottish accent. Yeah, so she, she, she um, grew up in Scotland, but then she went to Birmingham where she studied at the Central Work shop there so that was where she did all her, her acting studying and everything she started in a jacobite rebellion film called chasing the deer in 1994 that was her big right, break you make it sound like that's a well respected cinematic genre <laughs> yeah you know just one of those oh, I many love, jacobite what's your rebellion sort films of film? i like horror films i like comedy i like jacobite rebellion films well if you like jacobite rebellion films and you probably love this one because not only does it, yeah. it have jacqueline chadwick in it also had brian blessed beloved brian blessed probably being very loud and shouty in it um, so she ended up um, so she did that and then she was also in Emmerdale for a bit she was one of the many Dingles She's in Emmerdale dingle. she was Tina Dingle ting- <laughs> Tina, Tina dingle. dingle in Emmerdale for a little bit during the mid 90s I don't think she was there for too long a year or two maybe and, and Tina is apparently the exact same kind of character as as, uh, as she turned out to be I can't remember whether I've got a quote with it there later on but I, I did read something over the weekend with her saying why, am I, why do I just get cast in this kind of role is it is it something about me that people just want to make me? You gotta um, look into your soul. Sp- yeah, only you minxes. can answer this. <laughs> um, she ended up quitting Emmerdale. I think it's just fishing for compliments, saying that, isn't it? She said, "I can do more." Um, she quitted Emmerdale to. Um, she quitted. Ha- quitted. Yes, quit. It's to she, have her she daughter. <laughs> she had a daughter called Alexandra in the mid nineties. So it's like I'm not doing Emmerdale anymore. And about the time, she also said, "I'm not even gonna look at another script until Alexandra is a year old." And she stuck to that word. But a year and a half later, once, you know, Alexandra had grown up a little bit to be one, once she got, she got own, a job on Corrie. Once she got her own modelling career. Yeah, probably, probably. Um, so I found um, a couple of old Coronation Street magazines um, up in the attic when I was doing some research for this. And there was well, a... you went to look for them and you got them down. You make it sound like you were just sort of nobly striding about and they fell off the... Yeah. They open themselves on the right page for me. It's like the Coronation Street ghost that lives in Amatic. Yes. One one of the things she said back in 1998 was, and I won't do the Scottish accent. No, don't. I've not had too much to do so far, but I'm told that they've got some interesting things in store for Linda Sykes next year. I'm looking forward to a big snog on screen with someone. I also love playing the bitchy parts and would like Linda to have a really nasty side to people to latch on to. Um, so that was quite funny thinking that in the early days when she literally knew very, very little about Linda because even, although she started in 1998, she was only in like five or six episodes, or, or, I think, something that year. So she was brought in as a nasty piece of work. But in the early days, she's like, who am I going to have a big snog with? I hear that this big story is coming up for me. Um, little did she know how big the story would be because the tale of her and Mike really ran the character's whole time in Coronation Street. Um, so this is what we're going to be finding out about. An insider at the time described Linda as being a bit of a tough cookie. She's going to be making life hell for one of the factory workers. We'll find out who's everyone, is isn't it? In a minute. Um, so, Linda's backstory then. So, what we know about her now is um, she was born in the 80s, I think. No, 
no, maybe she's 70s? Born in the 70s. 70s, isn't she? sorry, yeah, that's right. But at some point during the 80s, her mum, Evelyn, walked out on the family because she felt mega underappreciated by her husband, Ray. Linda ended up taking on the burden of raising her brother, so it was her four boys, so the mothering role yeah. kind of fell just to like, her. Just uh, like Debbie. Yes, Webster. exactly. Just like Debbie Webster, exactly. I need also to have turned some out kids. a bit nasty. Right? Are you telling me if I have kids, I can just bugger off and leave as long them as one of them's a girl? To raise jobs you, jobs are good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what you need. Somebody Sorry, to kid. Cook my tea. You can do it. I'm f- I'm burned out. <laughs> I'm going to a nunnery. Well, in 1990, Linda left her own family because she couldn't cope with the responsibility anymore. Um, and she then went up to grow on the same estate as one Karen Phillips, who we, of course, know as Karen MacDonald on Coronation Street, the um, second Mrs. MacDonald married to Steve. Um, the pair ended up becoming friends and they eventually went on to work as machinists together in a factory called Wheelers. And that was just another fabric factory, I think. So, Gemma, tell us about 1998 Linda Sykes, please. Um, she had just appeared as a factory girl at Underworld and... Um, Hayley was, um, had not revealed that she was transgender. So when that came out, Linda was not happy about it. And she tries to get her bit to be banned from using the ladies' toilet. Mm. I think Linda would have a great time on the internet now. Don't you? Oh, I yeah. think she'd have a lot to talk about she'd on Twitter. She'd have a lot to say on social media. So I guess and thank this... you, Elon Musk, that now Linda can finally say what Whatever, she really wants. Whatever she wants, yeah. I, I think that was quite interesting that they... It seems like they kind of invented the character of Linda so that there could be more nastiness directed towards Hayley. And obviously we had the characters like um, Les Battersby well, who would say... were very open about their thoughts. Yeah, but I think, I think um, of the established characters, Les was easily the vilest about what he will had to say about Hayley but also Mike Baldwin himself was pretty nasty too wasn't it he kind of made a joke out of it for a little while and so I guess they didn't want to have any of the other factory girls at the time I can't remember who was working at the factory back then but um, they didn't want to have any of them show these distasteful opinions really so um, Linda came to being so yes you should try to get a ban from the toilets and um, that was basically it for 1998 1999 Linda was the ninth most featured character of the year. So from going to straight out of the gate, handful of episodes in '98, right for, in for there. Apple Pole. It was, but um, I was I was kind of looking through a lot of the episodes that she was in, and the majority of them, I would say, especially for the first half of 1999, although she was in the cast list for it, she didn't have anything to do, at least in the Coropedia summary of the episode. So this is what happens, I guess, when you're a factory girl. Not so much now, but back then. Um, you know, same in the 70s and the 80s, I suppose. There were an awful lot of scenes that were set in the factory and she would have just been there, you know... So in a way, going... Putting a poison in. Well, yeah, it is, it is a massive... And this is one of the things that people complain about who say that Corey's changed too much and they don't like it anymore. There's so much of this superfluous sort of chitter-chatter just been completely cut out of the show. Yeah, yeah. So she was there just for a bit of a, a bitch while you stitch, wasn't she, really? Um, and she... I think she eventually kind of uh, stopped being quite such a cow to Hayley, but there was definitely a, an, an undertone of I don't like what you are throughout mm. most of her time, uh, their time together. Anyway, not only did she know um, Karen, Karen hadn't appeared on the show at this point, but also Nita Desai, um, if you remember, she was the daughter of Rabbi Desai who'd just bought, or who was interested in buying the corner shop in early 1999. So Linda and her were friends as well. They are in the same class at school. And um, Ravi, um, who was a bit of a sly businessman as well, um, comes looking around the corner shop with a view to buying it from Fred Elliott. And because his daughter Nita had worked there, well, he'd kind of put her in there as a spy. So he came armed with this secret knowledge to try and, you know, say the right things and to try and get the price down, basically. But um, Linda ended up revealing to Ashley, Fred's son, who Nita really was. So, whoops. Whoops, and then I don't, Ravi ended up getting the shop anyway, but that was, it was interesting in the early days, they, they didn't have a whole lot for Linda to do, but yeah, she knows Nita Desai. She also dressed up as Susie Quattro in the Valentine's not Disco. Susie Quattro. Quattro, Quattro. Susie Quattro. Quattro for Maggio. What, what did I say? Quattro. Why is it then? Quattro. 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 She dressed as Susie Quattro at the Valentine's Disco. No, I don't even know what the word means anymore. Well done. It means something to do with four. Um, she ended up leaving with <laughs> Steve McDonald. I completely forgot that. Now, we watched the Valentine's episode, didn't we? And I think 
That might have been the one where um, Roy was having out, going off having his secret dancing lessons. Do you remember? And Haley thought that he was having an uh, having a, an affair with somebody, and uh, and he's actually there. He, he comes dressed up in a posh suit, and he has a lovely dance away. But yeah, Steve McDonald and Linda were a thing for a little bit. Now that caused a little bit of a furore with Lorraine Brownlow. God. Who, <laughs> who was Steve's ex and uh, the women ended up fighting over him and the Rovers which I'm sure he very much enjoyed um, Linda ended up getting fed up of Steve's stinginess before long what? because he was a he done quite a lot of money at a young age, hadn't he? Because for being a bit of a a young businessman, he was at his he was uh, yeah yeah he was he well he did his t shirt business and then he um he ch- he, he was good at the uh, at the races. Um, and then he got in trouble for handling his stolen whiskey or whatever it was. But anyway, she she saw him as a a nice uh, meal ticket. Well, yeah, meal ticket exactly. A, a wallet on legs basically. But he wasn't coughing up for her. So before long, we're like talking about months here. Things fizzled out between them. She also though um, started chatting up Robert Preston. Yes, that Robert Preston back in early nineteen ninety nine as well. Dead. De- yeah, dead and played by a different actor back at this time. So he was married to Tracy, uh, Tracy, well, she would have been Tracy Preston then, obviously, and but they'd had a bit of a falling out. Tracy, what? again, played by different actors. Tracy's this is, not volatile at all, I don't understand. This is Dawn Acton, Tracy, had t- appeared back on, um, on the cobbles again. Robert came chasing after her to try and um, you know, make things up with her, and Linda um, tried to chat him up, but um, yeah, he, 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 he wasn't playing ball there. And uh, it did lead to a nice little row between Linda and Tracy. So um, then we had um, a story where Mike was being blackmailed. Mike Baldwin, her boss, was being blackmailed by Greg Kelly, who was a bit of a wrong one at the time, um, Les Battersby's son, over a fling that Mike had been having with Julia Stone. Um, I think that was his uh, one of his solicitor mates. Um, and so... Linda finds out about this and then this is at this point is when the the real Linda setting her sights on Mike Baldwin story kicked in because she was like I'm gonna tell Alma all about this so utterly maliciously she tells Alma oh yeah Mike has had it off with Julia Stone he's being blackmailed Alma leaves Mike and Linda seduces him herself turning up at his flat one night with a bottle of whiskey and i had such vivid memories of this happening and this simple is, man this is when i was like no what what is this why is this, this young woman going out with this you know who i at the time i was like he's, he's like 55 or something I know, to this me is one like, thing he's, he's ancient what is i that? was gonna say is um re-watching things sometimes it's also it, it makes it very notable i think if you really think about it how much your perspective of life in life changes the way you um, consume media. And it mm. sounds obvious, but I don't think people sometimes give that aspect of things enough credit. No, Something no. like Coronation Street, which is such a long-running programme, it's really interesting to like look back on how you might think of things differently. Mm. Like I, I imagine that quite a few people who, who are listening to this who have been fans of Coronation Street for a long time who have never re-watched any of the episodes... Mm might be surprised if they were to revisit some of their favourite storylines that they might have a different a different perspective or like have a sympathy for a different character I mean no one no one's going to look back at this relationship between Linda and Mike and say oh yeah that was a that was a typical age gap there was still a good 30 years or so between them I would yeah but I just want to point out when I watched this it made total sense to me because both these characters were very selfish and narcissistic and I think that they also both knew what they were what they wanted what and what the other person wanted Mm. Linda wanted money she wanted the good life she'd had a rough upbringing and she wanted to lord it over everybody she it wasn't just about living in a luxurious lifestyle it was also being better than everybody else mm. and um he knew exactly the same he knew what she wanted mike he wanted but he wanted a hot young yeah. sexy woman who was willing to throw herself at him and do whatever he wanted and go along with sort of his his general life plans i mean obviously they had lots of arguments about the nitty-gritty day-to-day stuff but I think they both knew the score, and I really like this, because they were both uh, very, like, shark-like, weren't they? Mm. Really? And they were like two birds of a feather. Absolutely. It it makes a lot of sense. What other animal can I throw in? (laughs) She was so foxy. Yeah, it it makes a lot of sense. (laughs) (laughs) Makes a lot of sense looking back on it now, 
that well yeah he he was the sort of person that she would seduce and she was the sort of person who would do the well, seducing well, he's... you can't and it, it, it felt it's, it's character led it's not just like we're going to have this random yeah, young agree. character go out with this random old character it, it fit them just right Mike was a status symbol guy yeah the car the cigars the fancy alcohol the suits the the, the hot young woman yeah she was just another thing on his list of stuff that showed he was a successful, upstanding businessman. Mm. I don't know if there's anyone quite like him in the programme at the moment that they could have this storyline with. Because, you know, people of his age, I'm thinking you got, you know, Tim and Kevin and... It's funny how those characters to me seem a lot younger than I always thought Mike yeah. Baldwin was. <laughs> yeah. But they, and, and although, you know, Steve does... Um, or, uh, Kevin, Kevin, I Kevin, sorry, does have a business. He's not like... You know, yeah, back in the again, day, Mike was the proper ladies' man, you know, in the in the 70s. But, that's but I don't know whether I'd say Kevin ever was. But can I just say, is that a sort of person that really exists today? Like, the yuppie kind of businessman? Yeah, he was a proper wide boy, wasn't he? Do, they, do those people really uh, exist, or have they transformed themselves into something else for, for the new age? I don't know. Oh, I bet they do. Well, I'm sure that some of them do, but it's not like... You know, there were certain stereotypes that existed in, in certain eras in the yeah. 90s was yuppies and and uh, wide boys, like you say, and mm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. People were all love to hate yeah, and yeah. blame everything on them. So anyway, so she... So what is it now? Millennial uh, tech bros <laughs> yeah. that everyone hates. <laughs> anyway, she, she sets her sights right on him and he's like, yes, please. <laughs> so um, before long, she ends up bedding him and, and that's about it. Um, she, she is now his woman. So Linda offers to leave the factory because obviously there's going to be a bit of an imbalance of power it's between like her Johnny and, Johnny. and her fellow knicker stitchers. Might be there. the cleaner if it I'm was a bit you. Johnny and Johnny, wasn't it? Yeah. Lot, not quite look such Tracy a big Tracy in a cupboard. <laughs> I swear to God. So um, she's like, "Yeah, things are making things difficult. I'll, I'll leave." And he's like, "No, it's okay. If you keep things discreet, then I'm sure we'll be able to get along just fine." Well, let's see how that Mission turned fair. out. Um, she, she's like, she, she loves you know being on the arm of the boss. But when she's told we, well, you can't just flaunt it in front of everybody. That's she gets her then. nose put out of joint a little bit. So like he tells her, I can't take you into work in the car. You need to get a <laughs> bus and things. So she's not happy about that. So that sounds like absolute in, crap to me. When it's not a when it's not the working week, he makes it up to her. But he like takes her out to countryside trips and everything like this. But yeah, at the moment she's having to keep it secret and, and not really enjoying this. Although she did um, manage to get under getting his good books by becoming the factory spy. Also similar to Jenny and uh, Johnny, actually, because Jenny was uh, reporting back to, to Mr. Connor for a little while, They're all wasn't watching she? a movie. Yeah. Remember that? Yes, I do remember them all watching a movie. Terrible. At the Underworld. Absolutely yeah. terrible. So, yeah, there's, there's, like, there's this one um, woman at the factory who was caught, ste or who Linda catches stealing knickers, and she goes running off to Mike to tell oh, him. Oh, for goodness and... sake. Stealing knickers to, see, um... to feed your family at home. <laughs> of course, you should be allowed to do that. It wasn't one of those candy knickers that you can get, you know, the didn't naughty. They, didn't they do that? I don't was think that? They that was did. in Coronation Street once. Was it? What, the Someone, little beads? Right, right in. Am I imagining this, or was there not? something that no pun intended very briefly involved <laughs> edible knickers oh it's ringing a bell maybe i don't know what it is i'm sure it wasn't one of underworld staple lines did though. everybody see that fashion week um dress that they sprayed onto yeah, that I woman someone at work about that the other day now i think better better use of that technology Candy floss dress. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, Delicious I and sexy. That would be. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, no. Linda, before long, has let the power go to her head. And, and Deirdre, oh, Americans poor... Don't, Americans don't call it candy floss, do they? Cotton candy. Yeah, cotton candy. Sorry, yes. sorry. Carry on. Um, and, it's, and it was a cotton dress, so it makes sense. It carry, carry on. Deirdre carry on. is not happy because <laughs> she's working in the office with Mike Baldwin and, and Linda mm. is just really pushing the boundaries mm. and giving Linda, uh, Deirdre cheek. Mm. And, and, and Deirdre's trying to tell her off, but Linda's like, oh yeah, whatever. So Lin Deirdre's like, I don't, I'm not having this anymore. And so you. Mike says, Linda, you've got to back off here. Oh, dear. Otherwise Deirdre's going to quit. Hayley ends up being the one who uncovers this secret relationship between Lindy and Lindy, <laughs> Linda and Mike, and um, she's she's gonna um, tell people, but Linda says no, no, please keep it quiet. She's she's really desperate to go public in this. It's she wants to show off her yeah you know, rich you know 
boyfriend um, and Mike's like no I, I don't want it it's I'm going through a divorce with Alma at the moment I don't know how it's going to go down and everything like that so we've got to keep it on the down low but to keep her sweet for a bit longer he gives her a key to the flat but um, he soon lives to regret that because she ends up taking Nita to sign um, around there and um, so and so she basically is like yeah I've been going out with this this older rich dude come and have a look at his flat and she takes Nita around and she's like there's pictures of Mike there. Is this, is this Mike Paulson's flat? Is Mike your boyfriend? So this is how she finds out about it. Um, then you have um, Alma starting to realise that Mike is seeing someone. Um, I can't remember what the clues were, but Haley, who's obviously Alma's friend back then, tells her, yeah, you're right, your suspicions, I will confirm them, but you'll never guess who it is. It's Linda. So Alma, absolutely furious to hear this, storms around the factory, confronts Mike in the office about it, and it all comes out. You know, she's all the factory girls are there to hear it. Deirdre quits, um, <laughs> although Linda does convince her to come back because she wants Mike to take her on holiday, and he's going to need someone to look after the factory. <laughs> so she's like, Deirdre, can you come back to look after the place while I get jet-setted around the world? So, um, yeah, it's very, very... Um, controversial when this all comes out um when they come back from back this <gasps> thanks thanks for that when they come back from barley um in october linda moves in with mike barley barley <laughs> she comes in moves in with mike into his flat they are officially a couple of course this does mean the cut the power is going to go to linda's head even more <laughs> and she's like oh, brilliant i'm the boss's uh, oh. boss's other half i can do what i want brilliant. Uh, including having a snoop around the factory office and just you know just looking in the drawers oh, i don't man. care no one's gonna no one's gonna i'm not gonna get can in trouble i just for say this. characters like this i i love them because i wish i had this absolute the goal to do like, it disconnection between my thoughts and and other people's emotion, like worrying about what other people think and caring about people. Imagine what you could achieve if you just didn't care no about anyone's be. thought. Yeah, this what is would, Where would I be in life? Probably, probably <laughs> worse <laughs> off actually. <laughs> well, one of the things that she ends up finding when she's having a snoop around Mike's office is a is a birthday card that Deirdre has written to Ken, and oh, it's dear. a bit of a saucy one, and it's got some like it's sexy, like sexy words inside and everything. <laughs> probably, it probably was. <laughs> Um, and uh, and uh, she she ends up kind of repeating bits of it back to Deirdre and everything. Deirdre is absolutely fuming, as you would be if your privacy is invaded like this. So Mike ends up sacking Linda. Oh no! Because she he really wants to keep hold of Deirdre because she's a proper asset in the fact. Deirdre's so fantastic at being a receptionist. <laughs> so good. Um, any no no well, she, she was, was two days. Wasn't she, what? No, she was just saying yeah she was very good. Well, she was also, she cut her, cut her teeth working for... Oh, yeah, for Len Fairclough, Len. wasn't she? So that, was, that was a, a job for She used for to gruff men. Yeah, and doing and the numbers. She probably cope with it. Yeah. So um, Linda's sacked. So they, she then she goes back to Wheeler's, this factory that she'd worked in when she was younger. Um, one thing I neglected to mention back then Can't was that it. she had been having it off with Paul, who was the factory owner at Wheeler's as well. So she, she's got a type. She's, she's got a form. So she used to go out with Paul and Mike is soon mega jealous by about Linda working there, completely suspicious. I don't think anything did happen between them, I can't remember. But he's like, no, 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 you got to come back to, to Wonderworld, Linda. So he rehires her, promotes her to sales rep. Um, then in November, that's when you have a, another huge um, twist to this uh, relationship drama because Mike's son, Mark, appears. So Mark was kind of... He was, he was Linda's age-ish. His age had been changed a couple of times during the show's run. He was the fruit of a, a brief reunion, a brief union between Mike and um, a woman called Maggie Redman back in the 80s. And um, he, they, they, they were basically just estranged by this point. But Mark appears in November to try and rebuild bridges with his old dad. Um, he doesn't like the fact that his dad is obviously going out with this young bit of skirt in the slightest because he knows exactly what her game is. She's a massive gold digger. Um, but before long, they grow a little close to each other. He ends up fancying the pants off of her, especially after... Um, well, he, start, he, he starts going off with um, Leanne Battersby for a little bit, but Leanne nicks £50 pounds from Mike's flat. And when that turns sour, that's when Mark's attentions are really turned towards young Linda. Um, but how are we going to turn Linda away from Mike 
and make her fall into Mark's arms. Of course, she has to have a bit of an argument with him. So there was this one scene when um, Linda takes the factory girls round to his flat for a, for like for a Christmas revelries, and um, Mike comes back home. And is like, what the hell are you lot doing here? Sling your up, all of you. Linda's mega humiliated by the whole deal because she was like, hey girls, let's go back to let's go back to the boss's flat. He treats her like dirt, um, and then. That basically leads to, on New Year's Eve of 1999, Mark and Linda have sex in the factory. What? As the clock is ticking down. We've seen the Millennium episode, haven't we? So was, that was when there was a massive street party and then I remember Tyrone had his astronaut's helmet on and stuff. Uh. Um, and it, there was also the episode where um, uh, Jez Quigley and some of the others were trying to raid the rovers, I think. But um, yeah, over in Underworld, um, Linda... And Mark are getting down and dirty in the office. They're almost caught when Mike walks in, um, and and sort of Linda was like, "Bloody hell, that was a close call. We need to we need to put a, call this a day." And she tells Mark that she's going to say she was raped if he dares to tell anybody what happened. Over to you, Gemma. That was nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, and then a new millennium starts, and she's like, "Oh, these bad attitudes. We've got to stop like accusing <laughs> people of raping us when we have unfortunate." Um, Flings with them. Yes. So she she turned Not over the a new leaf. For the did 21st she? Century, no. I don't think she did. Two thousand. Uh, Mike Mike proposes to Linda, and very awkwardly asks Mark to be his best man. And are they still like yeah they're still fannying around with each other quite the, literally. I don't know Mark, whether they are fannying around with each. other. Well, let me that. tell you. Mark starts dating Claire M- Man Machin, Machin, who is an economic student, and he meets her at a party, and Linda gets jealous because. They go out together, uh, yeah, like out a to foursome, yeah. with her and Mike. And um, so Linda goes to the toilet and kisses Mark to try to reassert her Pleasant. dominance. So, yeah. Uh, then Linda and Mark have well, That's a proper, like, scrubberish thing to do, isn't it? She yeah. was a scrubber, wasn't she? She was a massive one. <laughs> so um, Linda and Mark have an on and off affair. And Mark eventually cannot cope with all these lies. And he threatens to leave Weatherfield... But he only agrees to stay when Linda says, oh, right, 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 we'll just be friends then. I'll just be friends with you. Mark dumps Claire when he finds out that Leanne has ditched her cocaine habit. What? Oh, yeah, I didn't say about what? that. What? Leanne? I can't believe a it. A Is that Jez Quigley's part, I tell you? Um. So when she was like all this holy, holy and now about Harvey and stuff, she was just sulking because she couldn't get any, her hands on any gear. Yep. Well, he, he ditches... Right, so he goes out with Leanne again because yeah. she's no longer <laughs> coked up. Um, but he still really likes Linda and he has sexy thoughts about her. Mm. Linda gets all the factory girls to go on strike because she sacks Bobby Lewis for being crap. No, sorry, he that does. That doesn't make any sense. He Mike, goes, Mike, Mike sacks, sacks Bobby, Bobby Lewis, Lewis. And Linda's like, let's all go on strike, girls. And then Mike says, all right, Bobby can come back. You keep your mouth oh, shut. Oh, no, sorry, this is wrong. I am completely okay, wrong Okay, well, you read this. the rest of it then. Linda is the one, sorry, to sack Bobby Lewis because she's she's let the power go to her head at this point. Even though she's just a sales rep, She's she, um, Linda has these naff pants. So all the other girls are the ones that say, we're not having this. We're not having Linda sacking Bobby for, the, for no particular reason as well. So Linda is then embarrassed when Mike reinstates Bobby and says, Linda, you have got nothing to do with the hiring and firing. Keep your nose out of that. Sorry, that, didn't make, yep. that makes sense now. Back over to you. Well, I don't know if I can read you it. You can if definitely it read that. that, that <clears throat> I, I'm I, can just, just, I can just read, read. Oh, what, just like reinterpret what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on you'll reality. get it, you'll get it. It's fine. Oh, thanks. Mark and Mike, I don't know. Mark, Mike makes Mark give Linda driving lessons and then they end up probably shagging in a lay bar or something. Yes, they have romps in the car. And she never learns to drive. <laughs> I don't think that she does in the end, but <laughs> probably takes longer than it would have done if she'd have kept her eyes on the road. Now, isn't there a TV show called Driving School or something? There was back then. Well, there you go. Maybe yeah. that was what inspired this storyline. <laughs> Mike and Linda panic when they're spotted c- kissing at a club by her friend Gina. Is this Gina? Gina, Gina Gregory, Gina yeah. G. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gina G. <laughs> um, Linda says, oh, please don't tell, don't tell Mike. I just feel trapped. Um by his face I don't know Gina's like okay I won't tell anybody yeah so Gina now knows about the secret affair she's the only one and it's creepy because obviously 
Linda is dating Mike. Yes. And this is his son. Yes. So it's weird. Yes. That's so soapy. That wasn't obvious. Linda gets Mark to dump Leanne and Mark is feeling pressured. So when his friend Craig, who's a backpacking friend, turns up, Mark's like, well, let's go to Amsterdam. I've heard the cheese is amazing. I've heard that they have really good tulips. I've heard that they have a cool thing called a rice table where you eat Indonesian food. Let's go. So, so uh, yeah, they went. Mark's like, Mark. See, Mark buggers off for a bit. Mark goes with Craig. Mm. Well, he leaves Mike a note saying, I'm off. Sorry. I'll be back for the wedding. And then, and then Mike's like, oh my God, Amsterdam's where they have legalised marijuana. And he's like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. He does. He has a bit of a heart attack, does Mike. Linda contacts Mark and says, oh, it's really serious. You need to come back to Weatherfield and bring some of that stuff with you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he she comes ma- back. She makes out that Mike's on death door, basically. He's not. He turns up with a load of, of pot and she says, I wanted some cheese. You're making this up. <laughs> but it's more interesting. <laughs> it's not. This is quite... All right. Enough. So he comes back and the doctor says... Actually, Mike's still got 20 years in him, which I think is something you can only say about a car. <laughs> well, the doctor was uh, seriously overestimated the number of years that Mike Baldwin had left was in him. Was he looking at, at his point, teeth or something? <laughs> right, Mark he had goes about back five to Amsterdam. Years in him at this point. Mark goes back to Amsterdam with Mike's blessing after Ar- Alma finds out about all of this affair and says, Look, Mike. Let Mark go. Yeah, she doesn't want Mark staying around here, obviously, with Linda there. So she's she's a bit like, go, sneaky run, and says, you, yes, let's get Mark Fly away. Off. Mike, you just need to... Stop. Yeah, make up with him. Stop answering blessing, the phone to people. Off you go. Mike and Linda get married. Mm-hmm. This is a very exciting event. This is a great episode. This was an hour long, wasn't it? This in, was um, like... Sort of September time, 90... I'd like to say maybe. that this might actually have been... Coronation Street's fanciest ever wedding. It was it was right up there, wasn't it? Was it? it was very a fancy. Big old hall. They had a big, beautiful staircase, and lovely. Everyone was was having a great time. And um, during the wedding, Mark disappears off with Linda. No, Mark disappears because Linda was like, "No, I'm not going to run off with you. I'm going to go ahead with this wedding." And then he decides to go up to his. Mark goes up to the hotel room and gets completely bladdered and then Mike finds him and Mark reveals everything about this affair that he's been having with his dad's what soon to be wife and so Mike disowns him but he still goes ahead with the wedding and goes on honeymoon with Linda. Mm-hmm. That was a good episode. This was the, great because everyone's the... crying in different rooms at different points and lying on the bed being all miserable and like pleading and begging each other to like, just let me go. No, you must stay with me. You must marry me. I, oh, I want to. And, and I just loved watching it again. So how dramatic. Mike just, he, he just like, no, I'm, I'm marrying you. This is what I came here for. But he's got her over a barrel basically, hasn't yeah. he? And as they're driving not away, way. not in a sexy way. I can't remember the driving whether it was a horse-drawn car or something but after the credits and this is Corrie's only maybe I'm going to say post-credit sequence um, it's, they show um, Mike and Linda it's sort of go, leaving the gates or whatever of this hall and uh, and he says I can't remember what he says to her sorry this is a really bad story but he's just like because you're a big slapper yeah stop it's, being it's a, not over yet or, stop or some, being a trash I've got you home. over a barrel I don't know he he, he makes it very clear but it's whatever very, it is that he says that she has not you know triumphed it, over him yeah she, she's she, yeah basically it is so basically he she thinks she's kind of won mm. but at the end it's very sinister because they're in this really dire relationship where everything's not based on love it's based on who's got the moral superiority over the other one yeah, kind of. it is. It's interesting saying like not based on love because I think that in, you know, in, in a weird sort of way, Linda really, really did care for Mike. She kind of grew to care for him, didn't she? I don't she, I don't know whether she was, you know, head over heels, you're my life partner or anything. If, otherwise, she probably wouldn't have had it off with his son. But she she definitely wasn't, you know, just repulsed by him and only with him for the money. She she really did, you know, have have some kind of feeling for him over the time. I'm thinking of like in um in the House of the Dragon, which we just watched, and you had Alison going out spoilers. with um with with the king, and it was kind Spoiler. of that sort of relationship. Well, again, there's also an age gap here and a power imbalance whereby mm. Mike's the king of yeah. uh, of Weatherfield, <laughs> and uh, Linda's kind of you know, completely beholden to him economically. Yeah. Um, and so it's... 
it's a very questionable relationship. But they get married anyway. Yes. They come back from honeymoon. Linda is still in Mike's bad books, but she's trying to keep him sweet and get him to forgive her. And then in October, this is when they have the fresh go siege and Mike gets held hostage with Ken. And uh, Linda's brother, Dean, gets shot and killed by Emma Watts, who is a police officer, and, and she turns up with a gun. Yeah, Dean was one of the um, people, the, the hostage takers, wasn't he? I, I, and then we didn't know who he was during the hostage. No. But we see at the very end of that episode, the, the armed police come in, Emma shoots this guy dead, and then it's you know, in the next like, episode or whatever, we get, get to doodles. find out that it was actually Linda's brother. Terrible. One of them. Evelyn turns up to Dean's funeral. The uh, yeah, Linda and Dean's mum. Mm. She reads about his death in the paper, so she and Linda reunite for the first time in years. So it's a good thing, really, wasn't it? They got killed. Yeah, nice family reunion. Um, Linda is initially very cold towards her family. She's acting like she's really important and bigwig and everything. But she softens up when Evelyn explains why she abandoned her family. What was it to do with? Just because that she, she was, hated him. Ray was being all, a bit of an arse to all the family, ugly. really. All the children were ugly and I couldn't stand it. <laughs> Um, the pair le- leave on civil terms, so yeah, isn't so that lovely? That, that, was the, that was Evelyn's um, entrance into the show, and then she kind of goes off um, for six months or so. No, it's not even that. Maybe it was-ish anyway, but she's back in 2001 in April because she has this story where she catches the attention of Fred Elliott, and there wasn't quite the age gap with this one. So now you got Fred, who's you know, best mates with Mike. Mike's going out with the daughter of... Fred's girlfriend. It was all very weird, basically, but but very juicy and cool to rewatch. It's the sort of thing that you like to do if you're doing a history degree and doing family trees. Yeah, yeah. So um, things get a lot worse for Linda and Mike, who, as as we said, are not on good terms at the moment because Alma, Mike's ex, is diagnosed with cervical cancer, and not just any cervical cancer, but fast-moving terminal cervical cancer. And Mike realizes what he's going to be losing. So because he'd been, he um, started seeing Alma in the late eighties, hadn't they? So they had a good kind of ten years together as a couple, and now are a hashtag classic curry uh, couple. The Kylie and Jason of Coronation Street. <laughs> Maybe not quite that much. And he did <laughs> treat her really badly at times as well, didn't they he? They were I think they're quite iconic. Yeah. I think they're iconic in Coronation Street fandom. Like I think, you know, Ken and Deirdre are the more famous couple. But mm. I think if you're a fan you'll you'll know that those those two had a very intense yeah. and volatile relationship, which is what we like on a soap, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah, he, he was like, he, he treated her really badly and work always seemed to come first and um, he kind of belittled her Never and, and everything like her. that. And, and he didn't realise, you know, what he'd lost Missed. until until she was gone. And, and now <sighs> she's mere weeks away from shuffling off oh, his mortal dear. coil. She She's like, Alma, I, I still... Still really, he's like, I've really got feelings for you. Um, I'm going to spend as much time with you as I can. And he, you know, goes off, he goes off on holiday with her. And um, and Linda is like, I, I do not, not like this. this. I'm not having this. You're my husband, Mike. And he's, he's like, I don't care. You, you had it off with my son. I, I can do whatever I want, basically. So Linda's like, well, I can do whatever I want as well. So she's. Well, starts, where does it end? Where does it end, Linda? Well. We'll, we'll find out very soon because this is her last year on the show. <laughs> she ends up flirting with Harvey Rubin, who was this kind of slimy, um, another, factory, another owner. factory owner who has dealings with Mike. Um, she ends up seducing him in Mike's flat when he's away with Alma one time. And she says, oh, me, me and Mike would have been divor- are going to get divorced and um, soon. And, and I'm going to get the factory and the divorce settlement. So if you stick with me, then you're going to be Harvey able to get Rubin's Underworld and thicket, everything. Then, isn't he? Who'd, who would really believe that Mike's going to let Linda have his factory? She, she, he, he didn't. He, He'd rather set He fire ended to up it. just getting his, getting his end away. No, that's not the right word. Because that was the first time. He ends up bonking her. Having a good old who? bonk. What? Harvey? Harvey does. And then he's like, no, I don't, I'm not interested in don't you at factory. all, actually. No. So um, Mike finds out about this this fling between Linda and Harvey. And and uh, says, why? Um, she says, well, I'm going to divorce you, Mike. I'm going to stick with Harvey. Yeah, and this is when Harvey's like, huh? no, I'm not, actually. I'm already married. I just, just wanted a bit of fun with you. So Linda is completely left with egg on her face at yes. this point. So Alma is reaching her final days now. She's staying at Audrey's house for a little bit. Linda calls round because she at one point she wants to find Mike, but he's not there. So it's just her and Alma, which was 
great, great scenes because really you know the, the the current wife, the ex wife, this one's dying, this one is you know is it's ruining her own life. In yeah, basically. Un- so they ways. end up getting into a blazing row. Alma's just saying, Linda, you're such a stupid idiot for cheating on Mike. Not just the first time with with his son, but now again with Harvey, you bloody idiot. So then Alma collapses. She gets all all full of the the, the moment Stop. and. Uh, yeah, she does a little bit. So Linda's like, oh God, I just killed her. <laughs> so Alma's taken to hospital and this oh, is where we find out that her kidneys have packed in. She's dying. Um, Don't and need those. The next episode, Alma is dead. Just, Linda's one of the ones round her bedside when she dies. And, and Mike's there. She, Linda has to watch Mike sitting on oh, on Alma's bed, so like her, her hand in his. And he's like, no, no, Alma. And, and Linda's like... Yeah. Oh, you're my my husband, and I've I've kind of brought this on myself. So um, <clears throat> yeah, that's right. It was all it was a punishment from God for Linda that Alma died of cancer. Yes, he made it happen. Mark reappears on the scene later that year, and uh, Mike's like, right, I want to let's put the past behind us. Going to rebuild bridges with you. Secretly, though, he was also starting divorce proceedings against Linda. Let bygones be bygones, except for my wife. Yeah. And then in Linda's final episode, which comes seems to come out of nowhere, she um, they're, they're at Fred and Eve's wedding. So Fred and Eve, her mum's wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, Linda tries to seduce Mark yet again. Mike catches her and he's like, well, I don't care because our marriage is over. We're getting divorced. He gives her a slap, shoves her into a car. She drives off and is never seen or heard of. Well, maybe he's heard of. Never seen again, at least not by us, the viewers. Um, and where we're at at the moment in classic Coronation Street is the fallout from that because we're now a few months on from the wedding and Linda has not been heard of. So they reckon that Mike has killed her. That's and and he's, he's been arrested. Everyone, uh, like Eve reckons that, that Mike's um, bumped her off. All of um, her brothers uh, are out to get him, like trying to set the factory on fire and everything. Um, the car gets pulled out of the canal. Linda's not inside. But everyone's like, where the heck is Linda? And it's not until, and this is where you guess we get the spoiler alert, early 2002, um, Linda's dad, Ray, gets in touch with Evelyn to say, oh yeah, she's she's alive, she's living in Ireland, she's got a rich fiancé, she's fine. And that's the last that we hear of her. And Mike is um, probably fairly relieved that he's no longer... Um, having to deal with that. Having to deal with being suspected of murder. Although I would have actually loved it if it had turned out that Mike Bolden was a, a serial killer. That would have been really great. Because no. then on the minute, well, Linda's dad tells the mum yeah. that she's here, right? Yeah. So who saw this? I'm going to retcon everything. Who saw this? Who heard this? I don't know. What? I guess Eve. And you can't trust what she said because she was a bigamist. She's a bigamist. You can't trust her. I reckon, I'm going to say, canon, that... He did kill <laughs> kill Linda because I can't believe that she bagged another rich guy. I reckon if Mike was still in the programme, it wouldn't be um, out of the question for them to do well, a bit of retconning there. Yeah, it? It's one to, of those things like, well, we didn't see it. We don't need Mike to be in the programme because we've got Adam. What if Adam's like, oh, I'm just going to investigate my dad. Oh, oh, he's a, he was uh, suspicious about... Um, about his wife disappeared. Oh, I wonder if I can get in touch with her and find out more about my dad. What's that? She's never been seen since 2001. <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe he did kill her. Yeah. Well. Well, that's what happened. I, it's not what It's all happened. made up, so it can, it, that's not. what happened. Let me tell you a bigger scandal, Gemma. Okay. So this is Jacqueline Chadwick's exit from Coronation Street. And um, yeah, there was, there was a bit of scandal around this. And if you look very carefully at Linda's final scene where she's getting slapped and shoved into the car by Mike, you may notice that we don't get to see her face. And that's because in her final appearance, Linda was played by a body double. So Jacqueline was pregnant with her second child at this point. And this is why that she was leaving in Coronation Street just like she left Emmerdale to go and have her first kid uh, Alexandra she was like well I, I you know going off on my maternity leave for Coronation Street so she'd played she, she she'd gone like six weeks or so without being in the show because early summer I think 2001 she she kind of fell ill I, you know, I, she took six weeks off. She, t- she took six weeks off Coronation Street. So she went on a maternity leave earlier than was expected. Coronation Street were like, can you come back to be in these wedding scenes, please? It's not going to be very much. Um, and it was only like, you know, five, six episodes or so. But um, 
apparently towards the end of it she just like i can't do this i'm still feeling really rotten i'm not gonna i can't be in my final scenes and then there was all rumors in the press and everything that coronation street had worked her too hard and and that she threatened to quit or she well, had just quit well, this is qu- the thing we don't know what happened we're only saying what what people yeah. reported and obviously and she's gonna juicy. have a different idea she's gonna say something different to coronation street and who knows what really happened. Well, but... and then you get, you know, you get your sources close to Jacqueline say blah, blah, blah. But Cory at the time denied that she'd quit. They said Jackie was feeling tired, so we decided to let her go on maternity leave earlier. Obviously, her health is our main priority. We're expecting her back. So as far as Cory were concerned, Linda was going to drive off. They, they had planned for there to be a Who Killed Linda storyline or a mysterious disappearance of Linda That's story. So cool. It was going to be... I don't know whether we were going to see this but they were going to be fishing Mike's car out of the canal with Linda not in there. Mm. But yeah, I think I get the impression that they were, we were going to see kind of Linda driving away, crashing into the canal and everything. So they had to have some major rewrites when Jacqueline had to go off on a maternity leave early. Um, so Corrie at this point had said that, no, she's Officially. not quit. Officially, she has not quit. She yeah. was just let off she on just, maternity yeah. leave earlier. But a family friend told the press, and I, and I got this quote from the Daily Record, um, she's resigned. They were working her too hard. They had her back for a week to finish her storyline before she went on official maternity leave. But she hadn't been feeling well and was under a lot of strain. She's told her family that she's walked out. The whole storyline is in turmoil now. She threw in the towel and said enough was enough. So um, I don't know whether we'll ever know the full truth about what happened there but by January 2002 um, she had absolutely 100% officially quit and Coronation Street bosses released a statement saying actress Jacqueline Chadwick has announced that she has decided not to return to Coronation Street following the birth of her second child. Everyone at the programme wishes her well for the future and the production team are now working on a fitting end to Linda's storyline. So definitely it seemed that she was going to come back and for whatever reason she decided over that, you know, autumn Christmas period, 2001 to 2002, no, that's it, I'm done with Coronation Street. So um, almost a little bit of an um, Irma, Irma Barlow situation where uh, Sandra Goff just decided, I'm leaving, I'm, I'm not off, coming I'm back. And this. Coronation Street were left, oh, what do we do now? Um, and uh, yeah, so quite scandalous. And actually, not only had she quit Coronation Street then, but that was it for TV for her. Coronation Street, the Laurel of Linda Sykes, would end up being um, Jacqueline's final role on telly. Um, but she still, um, you know, had her finger in, in, in dramatic pies because she went on to teach drama. She started up her own performing arts workshop called the Jacqueline Chadwick Academy of Performing Arts. And she set up drama schools. So that's all quite kind of nice that, uh, although she's not, you know, in front of the cameras herself, she's still probably created opportunities for, for hundreds of other up and coming um, actors and actresses of the early 2000s. Um, and, and now she lives in Canada. She, she set up a drama school in Canada as well, but that's, that is where she is now a resident. And um, I don't think she has anything to do with uh, drama now apart from I don't know whether these academies or drama schools are still um, I don't really know very much about these I did a, I did a Google search of Jacqueline Chad- Chadwick Academy of Performing Arts and there was one website that I found but it had last been updated about five years or so ago I think so I, I, I don't know whether it's still going but um, she's she's now a, she's now a, a thriller author, isn't she? She um she wrote uh, she released a novel called In the Still in two thousand and seventeen. Uh, a sequel to that was published in two thousand and nineteen. And according to Wikipedia, there's there's a third in the trilogy to come. But um, I th- haven't read it. Ha- it's it's not out yet, as as far as I know. I think it's been a long time coming. I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. But anyway, yeah, now a thriller writer. So quite cool, quite 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 interesting. I, I like the idea of that. Um. Because she she just she just didn't want to want to be in the limelight anymore. I guess in the same way she said, um, I, I don't know when this interview was from. I think this is fairly recently actually. When when one of her books came out, she said, um, when I started out in the soap, celebrity didn't exist, and your private life was pretty much your own. That all changed in the noughties when the phenomenon of stardom took off. Um, after having my two children, I decided it was time to quit acting as I didn't want them to be forced into the limelight because of me. I wanted to concentrate on things that really mattered: being a wife and a mother. I don't know whether I would agree that celebrity didn't exist 
in 2000 and you know in, in oh, she said when she, she joined in 1998 I think she'd be shocked now to like I think she if she was worried about having a private life I think she got out when she yeah when she should have done because I think the noughties were nowhere near as uh, fame hungry as the as the culture is now mm. I mean starting in 1998 I can't remember whether it was Brian Park that hired her or, or his uh, his successor but um, that that was definitely a proper turning point in the history of Coronation Street, and I, I think things did certainly start to, to spiral more then, didn't they? And, and that's why people yeah. like you know, um, Thelma Barlow wanted out. And, and well, there's a lot like of people that. who are on Coronation Street now who is quite private with their with their personal. Yeah, life. you still can be. There's definitely a good number of Coronation Street people now who you know don't do social media, and and, and we don't know what but, they get up to. But you know, it's it's also arguable that there's a new dimension to being a celebrity that you know didn't exist before, and. Mm. It can be difficult yeah, to, yeah. Uh, to opt out. Well, of that. when when she was, you know, at the height of that big storyline, she was, you know, in the papers quite a lot, and there's more to come on that later. But she was definitely, like I said, Corey's poster girl, and they wanted, you know, look, 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 we've got we've got Linda, not Linda, so we've got we've got Jacqueline Perry, Jacqueline Chadwick in our show, and so I guess she felt that that kind of pressure was getting too on, on top of her too much but I, think, I mean I don't know whether she you know whether she enjoyed it as well to a I think bit. these oh, days people dear. are also a bit more conscience, conscious you know in television about how much you have to protect your talent and you know making sure that they don't get you know I would say ethic, ethically people are a bit more aware of what the toll that it can take yeah in certain shows obviously different productions have different ideas mm. And it's also easier, it feels like, paradoxically, the more famous you are, the easier it is to protect your, your privacy because um, it can feel like you have to give away a lot of yourself to get more and more famous. Mm. Well, speaking of her private life, there was a there was another massive um, scandalous story that was, you know, late 90s, early 2000s with, uh, with Jacqueline because um, in what? 1999, she ended up getting engaged to an, an extra from Coronation Street called Lee Lee Atherton and he like drove cars around the set and stuff and and she made a big thing about look at me I've, I'm going out with this guy Lee now they'd only dated for three weeks before they got engaged so it was a real whirlwind thing and she's like going oh yeah we're in love I, got, I can't believe I fell in love so quickly we're going to get married um, but four months later they'd split up and she said uh, it just dawned on me that I was rushing into marriage with a guy that I didn't really know very well um, we've had some good times over the last few months, but in all honesty, I suddenly realised I could be making a big mistake. So I decided to call it a day. It wasn't easy. Um, but that wasn't calling a day on the story because Lee then went on to sell their story to the News of the World, which isn't a newspaper that exists anymore, but it was basically the Sun on Sunday, wasn't it? Um, sun on steroids. Yeah. Um, and, and he, yeah, he, he got this, uh, allegedly got this five figure sum to, to sell the story of their, and I quote, eight month marathon of lust. To, marathon. To marathon, yes. And, and, and it was just, it was one of these awful kiss and tell stories about, you know, we romped for hours in the hotel room and everything and we were so noisy and people were banging. It's it just all these horror, really... Unnecessary details. How, yeah, it really, really was. The sort of no thing that business. that kind of newspaper really thrived on. Mm. Jacqueline, though, was not having any of that and she ended up making a formal complaint to the Press Complaints Commission, oh, who, God. in a fairly landmark decision at the time, ruled against the paper. Usually, if people ever complain like that, they would... The, the, the Press Complaints Commission would say, well, no, you've put yourselves in the public well, eye. You were also quite I mean, out there saying... Well, it's very difficult, isn't it, to get some, to, to sort of argue that this is nobody's business if you're famous. Especially where she had been in the previous year saying, well, yeah, look at us, we're, we're engaged. I want to talk about our relationship. But no, the, the Press Complaints Commission were like, sorry, news of the world you breached Clause 3 of the Editor's Code of Practice, which states, everyone is entitled to his or her private life and family life, home, health and correspondence. And the newspaper was like, uh, no, they've been open about their relationship in the press before, but you know, they, they eventually backed down. So that was a, that was a you know, massive scandal. There. Well, it's not really surprising then that she said, well, I'm out, I'm out, I'll see you later, yeah. I'm not coming back. Yeah, yeah. Of course but, she... Yeah, good on her for standing her up for, for, for herself there. And I, I think there was a... I think these stories still happen, though, don't they? 
I think, well, you I was know, just thinking to myself, these, these oh, we don't... have got such huge coffers. Do we that have they're... kiss and tell stories anymore? I mean, it really was the heyday uh, in that era. Hmm. Um, but I, I was like, oh, I don't think we do anymore. I think people are a bit, a bit, uh, bit more respectful. But then I think, actually, there's a whole new breed of celebrity that sells stories about themselves. Hmm. We don't need the news of the world to go around offering money to somebody's ex fiance because they'll go to the papers themselves and say, oh, I was in this reality TV show and I shagged around with this guy and that guy and that yeah. girl and this girl, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I think that's why... Oh, could you say that, like, the the press getting in trouble about, you know, following what you might call real celebrities, you know, people who have talents <laughs> that are celebrated <laughs> because of that. Did they have to create or, like... Uh, manufacture this interest in reality tv stars who don't have mm. you know That's funny, uh, isn't it? have don't have the power to sort of stand and say you can't write that about me because yeah. they really only exist because of stories like that and, and and this time when this was all happening <sighs> this was just at the birth of that kind of genre as well because the first series of big brother in the uk was 2000 so uh oh my god i think, I think she did get out of there at the right time if you know if yeah this is the thing it's it's a bit i think it's a bit easier now if you're a celebrity to say i'm not playing that game but, jeez. Mm, I know. Um, a few other um, little tidbits I found from um, old newspaper articles that are still available online. I was kind of combing through, uh, seeing if I could find anything else interesting. And uh, this is also the time, and um, maybe this hasn't changed either, when newspapers would report that such and such was going to happen in the soaps, which is completely doesn't end up happening. Because in August 2000, the Star reported that Linda Baldwin would find out that she was pregnant, but they wouldn't. she wouldn't know who the dad was. Like, yeah, that would make sense as a story, wouldn't it? You see in the father and the son, mm. who's the daddy? Seems like it writes Ooh, it itself, like but they didn't end up going down that route. Um, and also, in uh, a year later, nearly, in June 2001, the Star reported that Linda would end up marrying Mark instead of Mike. So a lot of people went into the summer thinking, yeah, she's going to end up wedding him instead. But it didn't happen. Oh. So it just make, sometimes it makes me wonder, you know, was this a story that was, you know, you know, bad about the the writer's room and considered and, and then it got out or did the newspapers just make it up completely could have been either i don't know here's another good story jackie jacqueline persuaded Anne kirkbride to get her belly button pierced who plays deirdre who played deirdre yeah and um i i'm kind of i don't know what's more shocking that or just the fact that Anne kirkbride had a pierced belly button <laughs> never would have guessed would you well she told the sunday people this so you know, it must be true. Must be. She said, before I had my done, Annie said to me, I'd love to get my belly button done, but don't you think I'm a bit old? And I told her not to be so daft. Then I phoned her on the way back from the salon and I said, guess what I just had done? And as soon as she saw it, she said, right, I've got to have mine pierced too. So I went and held her hand because she was a bit worried it might hurt. But she wasn't upset at all when it was done. Now wherever she goes, she shows everybody. She's got a <laughs> silver one with a small ball at the top and a big silver ball at the bottom. <laughs> Oh. Picture that, listeners. So many photos. I can't. Shop it I literally don't think I can. <laughs> um, another funny little story I found was that um, Coronation Street ran an online competition. Yes, online back in two thousand. Wow. To win Linda Sykes's two thousand five hundred pound wedding dress. So um, yeah, you could you could go on their website, enter, and then hopefully get this up. this massive frock. Like? Um, so it ended up being won won by a woman called Sarah Brooks who um, said that she was going to sell it to buy a new kitchen. Um, she she did oh, have a yeah. she did have a boyfriend, but I, they, they weren't they planning weren't. to get he married. He was like, look, look, love, I don't know why you entered a competition to yeah. win a wedding dress. So Linda so Sykes' wedding now? dress was very, now I look at it, very, I would think very distinctive, because she was the one who had the uh, bunches of grapes all over the place oh, yeah. with a headdress that had grapes on it. I cannot believe this cost £2,500. It had like a, it was like a champagne coloured with like a split bustier with uh, the panel inset that had the grapes, like the, grape the grapes of design wrath. right in the middle over her cleavage and then <laughs> like a V-neck bodice, uh, a V-tapered bodice and then a big, massive, massive skirt. Hmm. Wowie. <laughs> um, th this this winner, Sarah, said, um, I watched the wedding with 17 million others. 17 million. God, can you believe that? 17 million watching this episode. Well, it was a it. huge, huge episode at the time. I remember being it being really hyped up. Anyway, I remember watching this and I was knocked out by Linda's gown. I never thought I'd win it. I'd love to wear it on my wedding day, but we're in no rush. And 
I said she didn't because she went and sold it for a kitchen. So did she, uh, who bought this wedding dress? I don't know. I don't know where it is now. Do you reckon she's got to sell it? Because I think it's all very well and good to say I'm going to sell it for a kitchen, but so you've got to find somebody to buy it for from you. <laughs> very, very true. Because I remember watching it going, well, who cares about grapes that much that that's what they have on their wedding dress? It's not like it was, you know, it was her thing, was it? No, I mean, it's like... if Probably you're... liked a nice glass of wine, but like, back in the day, it, it was doesn't? like, oh, I was just going to show how sophisticated I am having grapes on my wedding dress. What's next? It's a Mediterranean, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe she isn't the heir to a grape fortune or, you know, okay. like a winery or a big <laughs> champagne house it would make sense but she's just a random liquor stitcher yeah, from the estates oh well so um, this is what Jacqueline had to say about playing Linda she's fun to play because she's such a bitch she can be so hard faced and I think people like a screen bitch someone they love to hate she's right it's a brilliant role Linda's a dream to play I love all this bad girl stuff and I'm quite envious of her really she knows what she wants and she makes sure she gets that's it that's what I'm saying yeah that's what I said about her yeah I very often think I reveal too much about like how much of a psychopath I wish I was on this programme. Only you had the, uh, the courage to don't, say don't what think you I thought. Could, no, but I don't think I could deal with the fallout of just being horrible to everybody all the time and being <laughs> and making everyone sad. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that was Linda, and, and she really was just known for that big you know, two-year-long story of going out with Mike, copping off with his son, getting through with the wedding, and then disappearing off not long after. But I think it... I think it's a fairly well-remembered story, isn't it? Very explosive, very soapy, very dramatic. She was so she was such a a dynamic character. I think she's mm. quite scary and intimidating. I would hate to cross her. Yeah, because um, she, she was she played like hard very well, didn't she? Yeah. She was a proper bit of rough, mm. and uh, and she could be quite intimidating, especially to poor Haley in the early days. I think they cast really really well there, and and like we said earlier, just a, a perfect match for Mike and. I don't think it could work at the moment. I mean, there, there isn't well, any dead, old so. guy... Well, thank you. There, there aren't any old fellas on Coronation Street now that could do that role. But I wonder, is there anybody on Coronation Street currently, you know, young woman-wise, who, if they were to bring in somebody, you know, this old 55, 60-year-old rich geezer that would, you know, fall for them? Well, I'm going to say, I don't think Coronation Street is brave enough to make us hate a lot of the characters that are in it now. Who's an unlikable wench on Coronation Street? I mean... I mean, there are boring people. <laughs> they're ten a penny, but... Are, are there any hard-nosed, hard-faced, young, beautiful bitches? No, I, I don't think, think Well, I mean, are. I think somebody like Daisy, the role could work with. Well, because they, they, they've redeemed her very quickly. She could have They have, she but she's have still been. got an edge to her, hasn't mm, she? But... She's not like a shag around with your son and ruin your wedding day kind of a... No, but I think she's the sort of character that if they decided to take her down that route, you go, yeah, okay then. Yeah, but it'd still be, it'd still be a mistake. Because she, she's definitely been accused she's of being a fun... gold digger herself, hasn't yeah, she, when she was going out with is. Daniel. Yeah, 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 she is. I mean, maybe even someone like Alina, because I'm still convinced that Alina's going to come back with Tyrone's baby. Yeah. And I, and I think that maybe she could... Uh, flutter her eyelashes at some. Oh, rich definitely. Dude. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something controversial. Go for I it. I want them to do this to Alia. I want Alia to just have a mental break and decide that she's fed up being in goody two shoes. Yeah. Just like, go, go. Right, I'm going off with Matt, and then um, <laughs> comes back like two months, two months later with like leather trousers, smoking a cigarette, going, "All right, Gran. <laughs> you know what I say to you? Stuff speed, doll. I'm gonna carry on designing knickers, <laughs> and my knickers are gonna be crotchless." And then she takes a big drag on her cigarette and just blows smoke in everyone's face. Tell you who else? Don't could... I get that anymore? Do you? You don't. Tell you who else they could do this to? Um, Rosie Webster. If they yeah. were to bring her back. We Sexy, did have those reports Rosie. in the press just recently that she said she might come back. Oh, Apparently wow. she hasn't said that, but the press are reporting it. I think that having her going out with somebody her dad's age, I think Kevin would like... He, he, he would blow he, his top. He would, that's the word I He'd was, have a mild I was looking attack. for. He, he would. <laughs> I think that could be quite fun. I was also thinking of like any other times that this has happened in the past. And it made me think of going back to... Um, we mentioned Irma Ogden earlier, didn't we? And she ended up, she was going out with Dave Smith for a while, yeah. wasn't she? Who was definitely a, a rich, rich old. much older, um, <laughs> nasty kind of piece of work. But um, yeah, I think that this is the most iconic of the uh, age gap. Why not have gold a gold digging, digging hard faced bitch come in and who? But the thing is, what what kind of like you said earlier? We we don't really have a, a sort of a. A middle-aged gentleman who uh, 
No. It's a ruthless business. You couldn't business really do it around the other way around. Like somebody coming in and wooing Carla or something, some young 20-year-old. Like but it, it wouldn't be the same, would it? That people would be just like, yeah, get in there. I don't you know. know. I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, weird gender dynamics going on with the mm. uh, with a with a reversal like that. Yeah. Anyway, that was in the, I, as I said. I definitely um, changed my opinion about her on the rewatch. I did like her. I think partly what I enjoyed was seeing that she she did actually care for Mike in her own weird way. Um, well, what does but, it matter whether but, she cared for him? Did he care for her? I think I think he did, and I think when he realised he'd been made a fool of. Um, it was like a pretty sobering moment for him. Well, I think and it's more sobering because he thought he was pulling one over on her and, and mm. uh, actually it turned out it was not the case. Yeah, I can't just imagine finding out that your bird's going out with your son. Well. What a shocker. Only in soap. Troubling, isn't it? Mm. Well, not only in soap, you just got to read the news of the world to find out about <laughs> other things like that that happen. Anyway, that's it for Linda Sykes. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Managed to get a good hour and ten minutes out of her there, out of a character that was only in it for a few years. Um, I hope you um, enjoyed revisiting her story, and I hope that if you are watching on ITV3 at the moment, we didn't spoil things too much by saying she's still um, she's not living dead. free, just in Ireland at the moment. Let us know, what did you think of the character? Would you pay £2,500 for her grape-themed wedding dress? <laughs> did you? Are you the person who bought the wedding dress but from a uh, prize winner What's her face? Sarah Brooks. Sarah Brooks. Are you Sarah Brooks? Yes. Yeah, Did you Brooks. get your you kitchen? Still, what, are you still one of the I 17 can... million Coronation Street viewers out there? I can just imagine Sarah Brooks standing next to her beautiful new kitchen with, a, you know how you used to be able to get those tiles with like embossed like cornucopias? Mm. Hers would be grape themed. Yeah, maybe that's going, why she likes it. There you go, see. Yeah. What did you Checking think about the out. story? Was the story like, because I one, one of the things I do think about it was that there was definite kind of change in mood to Coronation Streets in the early 2000s and it, it did get a bit grubbier and racier and sexier didn't it and this sort of storyline I don't think would have flown you know no. in five maybe well definitely not ten years Can you before. imagine Derek doing it, this yeah it was it was a new era for the show and, and some say it's kind of was one of the stories like this that was the beginning of the end for the the, the classic traditional Coronation Street that people love. But well, it, that, that, it certainly probably thought. did mark a change, and you know, changes involve things coming to an end. Mm. But as far as to say that it wasn't as popular, you can't say that at all because 17 it, it, million yeah. people. It, it was honestly. It was, it was obviously really the right thing to do time. for the future and the continuation it, of the show. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, I know. That's it. 